Here they come. And on the left, Leicester City. Chelsea are the first FA Cup winners at the new Wembley. Welcome to the Emirates FA Cup Final Preview Show. Coming up, can Brendan Rodgers guide Leicester to a first ever FA Cup? We have the opportunity you know, to achieve something that hasn't been done yet in the whole history of this you know, fantastic club. Or will Chelsea rise to the occasion and rebound from last year's heartbreak? I'm going to give my absolute best and, and I know the team will as well. And hopefully it'll be that, that, uh, that type of ending. There's the inside track on the men who could make the difference at Wembley. The sort of old man of the team, the way he is, he enjoys a crossword on an away game. Lovely guy, always laughs and uh, always joking around. And Michael Owen on why the FA Cup means so much. If you said to me you can live one day again, I would definitely go back to FA Cup final day. <sighs> to me, it was, the, it was the best day of my life. Football club ownership has never been under more scrutiny. England's top six clubs were exposed by their links to a failed Super League. But at Leicester City, leadership has never been under question. I think from a management perspective and a club as a whole, you know, the supporters, um, they, they, they know fine well how fortunate they are to have an ownership like this, where they first and foremost, they put the fans uh, at the heart of it all. You know, there's a real, genuine feel and love for the supporters, and, and that's the essence of what Leicester City is about. It's that combination between supporters, players, management, and the club coming together to, to try and achieve the impossible. There's great clarity around my work. I can work with, with freedom, but also work in the trust uh, of everyone uh, that is here. It's very clear the market that we're in. We, we can't spend some of the monies that some of the other clubs will do. Um, but that's, that's OK. At least we know that. We know that, what that market is. But we will be competitive. And that's something that uh, the club has done exceptionally well over the last numbers of years. Leicester City is recognised as one of the top clubs operationally in, in the country. Yeah, it might not have the status or the, uh, or the history of some of the so-called bigger clubs. When in the league was an incredible story, I think every football supporter around the world loved it. And they showed that everything is possible in the game. Had it difficult maybe one or two years after that, because to acclimatise to that status and, and expectation was always going to be difficult. However, I have to say since coming in, from an economic perspective, the clubs run magnificently well. And from a, a performance aspect, we've tried to uh, come together to try to, to be able to compete at the top end of this league and look to, uh, to get European football as often as we can. When the Leicester manager walks out at Wembley for the final, he'll face a club that shaped his education. I spent my formative years as a coach at Reading and had a great experiences at Reading learning the ropes as a young coach. And then the next step was for me to go to an elite club, a world-class club. Uh, and at that time, Chelsea were really aspiring to be a a successful club. So in 2004, I joined there and I uh, just over four years of an amazing experience. I'll always be grateful for the time I had at Chelsea, the respect they offered me as a young coach. So I've got uh, a big admiration for Chelsea as a club, 
and obviously knowing that when we go into the game, we're playing against a, you know, a very, very good side. They've got outstanding players. Thomas has done a great job since he's gone in there. He shows his experience because what you learn through experience, no matter how you want to play with the ball, fundamentally you have to be able to defend well. Uh, so as he's come in and given them that defensive structure and that has allowed their, their top players to go and play. So we know we're going to have to be at our best uh, to win the game, but it's a game we're excited about and, uh, and one that we'll relish. I think for most British coaches, we've grown up with the, the importance of the FA Cup. You know, from being a young guy watching it and on the TV, seeing the whole build up to it, to now eventually have that opportunity to walk out at Wembley with a, with a chance to win the trophy is, of course, it's, it's really special. When I first came into here, we wanted to compete for trophies. We know the task, we know how difficult that was going to be. I, I wasn't really aware of, of the history of Leicester City in the FA Cup, but since joining and being able to look at that and get a sense of it and the importance of it uh, to the supporters and to the club in, in general, then, then of course our, our focus even more so is to want to win it. And for us, we have the opportunity uh, to achieve something that hasn't been done yet in the whole history of this you know, fantastic club. I would love to be able to do that for Kunta, obviously sadly losing his father a few years ago, uh, to be able to give him that prize as well as for the supporters and the players would be, would be truly special. And, and the FA Cup, it's such a, a competition that's revered around the world. And uh, so to be able to do that for the first time and, uh, and give him that feeling, yeah, it would be, it'd be fantastic. Hi, I'm Mark Albrighton, and these are my Leicester teammates. Casper is a, is a great character. He comes from a winning family, so uh, yeah, Casper's, Casper's a born winner. Ricardo Pereira, he's um, been immense for us in, in the last two seasons. Suffered a, a really nasty injury last season, and everyone at the club is, is behind him in his uh, quest to get, to get back to full fitness. Tim's settled in really well. He, he, he's got a lot of energy, uh, likes to get forward, very good at defending. He's done really well for us. Wesley Fafana, he's burst onto the scene. Um, he's, he's took it by storm, the Premier League, and he's got great potential for the future. Johnny's uh, the sort of old man of the team. The way he is, he, he enjoys a crossword on an away game, but when he's on the pitch, he's, he's a leader, a born winner. Cags is a very funny guy. Come over, don't speak uh, too much English. He still manages to, to form good relationships with, with the rest of the squad, and that's a credit to him and, uh, and his personality. Wilf is, he's the, the battler in midfield. He reads the game really well, but he also knows how to win the ball back with, without committing too many fouls, um, which is a skill in itself. Again, a, another really big prospect for the future. Yuri, this has probably been his, his best season that he's had for us. His fitness levels are right up there with, with the best in the squad, and his technical ability, his, his vision to, to spot a pass and then execute it is probably the best we've got in, in the team. Matters is the, the sort of maverick in the, in the team. He's got all the ability in the world. I think if he gets a full season under his belt, maybe next season he could really set, set the Premier League alight. To have around the building, he's been absolutely fantastic. He's, he's the happiest guy in, in the club by an absolute mile. Nothing, nothing phases him. He's, he just gets on with his work and, uh, and makes people laugh along the way. He's been the most vital part of, uh, of what we've done here at Leicester over the last few years and it is a name that will go down in history, not only at this club but in English football. 12 years in the game now and hard working, winger, wing back, full back, anywhere where I get put, but yeah, just Enjoy playing football and want to keep playing for, for many years to come.
Beaten in their four previous FA Cup final appearances, Leicester City have earned another chance to make history after reaching their first final since 1969. This season's journey began at Championship Stoke City. Fullback James Justin with the pick of the goals in a 4 0 win. I just cut in on my, my stronger side, saw another man coming, pushed it out, and I thought, why not end up in the back of the net and I'm delighted with a goal. For the second season running, Leicester travelled to Brentford in the fourth round. The Bees had a new home, but Leicester were victorious again, coming from behind to win 3 1. Job well done, sly performance from the Foxes to turn things around. Next, Brighton came to the King Power, where Leicester left it late. If it's going to happen, it has to happen now, and it has! Kelechi Iheanacho has just headed Leicester City into the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. Then came a home tie with Manchester United, a place at Wembley the prize. Well, that's an opportunity for Iheanacho. And that's another terrific strike from Yuri Tielemans. Flight it in beyond Henderson and headed in by Ian Acho. Congratulations, you're Thank the man you of the Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on! Into the last four for the first time in 39 years, the semi final against Southampton represented a significant milestone for Leicester and for English football. Leicester City make their way out into an arena which has supporters for the first time in 2021 at a professional game in England. Every time a shot went in or there was a save or there was a tackle, just to hear the supporters uh, just brings a different intensity to the game. And those 4,000 spectators saw Leicester's informed striker grab the headlines. Two years without an FA Cup final comes to an end for Leicester City. I think FA Cup love me and I love FA Cup. <laughs> Supporters have had to be patient for so long to have them there for the FA Cup final. It'll be special and, uh, and hopefully we can uh, pick up the trophy for them at the end. Having never won the FA Cup, is this finally Leicester's year? This week, 20 years ago, Cardiff's Millennium Stadium hosted the first of six finals as the temporary home of the FA Cup final. That day was the realisation of a lifelong ambition for 21-year-old Liverpool forward Michael Owen. If I put it into perspective what it meant to me, I mean, FA Cup was everything as a kid, everything. I just remember, I have this picture of all of the family having a barbecue. I remember at half-time, getting the ball out and thinking, right, what I've just seen. We had one tree in our front guard, and I'd dribble around it, I'd smack it into the, into the garage and, and run around the estate saying, Michael Owens just scored the winner in the FA Cup final, knowing that quick, in 10 minutes, the, the game kicks off again for the second half. While the venue may have changed, the occasion remains very much the showpiece of the English football season. I think what made it extra special was the opponents that day and the way the game went. I mean, Arsenal were in that era of invincibles, winning lots of trophies. They had the Vieiras and the Petites and the Omri's and all these great players. I mean, they were absolutely brilliant. And I don't mind admitting it, they were better than us on the day. And Liverpool might be stretched now. It's Jukberg going all the way through. Freddie Jukberg! 1-0 in the 72nd minute. They threw everything at us and we were still in the game, only 1-0 down. We had handballs that potentially should have been penalties. We had, they had chances that they probably should have killed the game with. And we were still in there fighting and out on our feet fighting. I mean, it was boiling hot. Seaman staying back on that goal line. It's Owen! It's 1-1 with seven minutes to go. They have bounced back and they have done so in style. Michael Owen. Well, you would have put your shirt on him, wouldn't you? I'll always remember scoring the equaliser and just jogging back. And I remember just feeling they're gone. That, you know, they've thrown everything at us and we're still there and they're not beating us. And then I remember looking up at the clock and thinking, have we got time to finish them off now or is it going to take extra time? 
and of course uh, when Patrick Berger played the, the ball into space then that was my moment to, to finish it. Look at the pace here of Michael Owen again! It's there! Michael Owen strikes again! And incredibly, Liverpool have turned it round. The boy is a genius! I used to dream of scoring the winner, you know, I didn't dream of being 1-0 down with three or four minutes to go and scoring the equaliser and then scoring the winner. It was just, it was just magical. The final whistle at Liverpool, thanks to this young man, have done it. To score two and it to mean something, it to mean something to so many people, all the lads sort of jumping on you saying, you know, we wouldn't have won the FA Cup if it wasn't for you. It fills you with, with an unbelievable emotion. I think the performance against Arsenal wasn't just the highlight of my Liverpool career, it was probably the highlight of my career as a whole. I mean, I know people will look back and say Argentina goal or Germany hat-trick, but if you said to me you can live one day again, I would definitely go back to FA Cup final day. To me, it was the, it was the best day of my life. Still to come, will 2021 see another FA Cup for Chelsea? Chelsea has a big history in the Cup and um, I want to do everything that we can uh, write another chapter. And we count down our top 10 FA Cup final goals. And Hatchie! What a magnificent goal! It's funny because uh, for me there were other people before me, other players who I looked at as Captain America. No one really calls me that on a personal level, but uh, I mean if the fans like it then I guess uh, <laughs> I'm okay with it. This weekend brings Christian Pulisic a second chance to make FA Cup history. It's not really what I'm looking for, you know, to be the first American to do this or that. I'm just uh, I'm trying to win uh, for, for this team here really is, is the main thing. In last year's final against Arsenal, the 22-year-old from Pennsylvania was a key figure. There's definitely that uh, little chip on my shoulder from, from last year. Uh, I think I had a good performance early on, but, you know, a couple unfortunate things and uh, couldn't get it done. It had all started so positively. I just remember turning and, and going forward and, uh, yeah, early on in the game, and it was, uh, yeah, we felt really good as a team and I just got the ball in the box and kind of instinctual touch and then uh, and finish and it was a yeah really really great moment and Pulisic has worked his way through a goal inside five minutes and it's come from the United States of America he was the first American to score in an FA Cup final but just after half time his game was over it's tough obviously I felt really really strong in that match and, and I had a goal and that obviously brings your confidence up I was driving forward uh, towards goal and uh, yeah, I kind of just felt, felt obviously the hamstring uh, go as I was tripling and I tried my best to finish out the play, but it was just a really tough moment for me. And uh, obviously I wanted to continue, but yeah, it just uh, wasn't my day, I guess. Pulisic could only watch as Chelsea's grip on the game slipped and Arsenal seized the initiative. Uh, it was definitely tough to watch. It was a game that I, I felt we could have won few tough moments in the game that just kind of swung in their favor in the end and it's something that uh, you know we look back on a bit but nothing that we should hang our heads over and now we have another opportunity to be on the right the right end. Thomas Tuchel's arrival in January has reinvigorated both the club and his former protege. We have a pass together uh, from Dortmund so I think it's a yeah it's a good good uh, you know relationship that we have. He has this ability to, to give an enormous input physically. He has this ability to, to constantly accelerate, decelerate, change directions on a, on a very, very high level of intensity, which uh, gives us an enormous uh, boost and input. But do the ghosts of Wembley 2020 remain? Not at all. I've uh, been feeling really good. been uh, playing in a lot of the recent games, and I, and I feel great. He feels fully fit, which is very, very important. 
Second, he gained confidence in his role in the team and uh, I have the feeling that he feels more calm than in the beginning when, when I arrived. Tuchel's impact has been built on a defensive strength that Leicester City must try to overcome. It's a dangerous team. We, we know what they bring. They have uh, a lot of dangers all over the field. They have good players, a lot of talent up top especially, so we're going to be prepared. We've been very strong defensively since his arrival. I think uh, tactically we've been re really strong and just a, a hard team to break down. And that's all credit to, you know, to him and to the team. Only Tim Howard has traveled across the Atlantic to lift the trophy. Is it now Captain America's turn? I'm going to give my absolute best and, and I know the team will as well. And hopefully it'll be that, that, uh, that type of ending. Hi, I am Hakim Ziyech, and this is my Chelsea teammates. Kepa always have these uh, crazy reflexes, and I think he showed that in, in, in all the games he played in the FA Cup. Yeah, true captain, huh? Always organizes the thing for the team, and, and, and always uh, he's a true captain. Lovely guy who always laughs and uh, always joking around. Yeah, we call each other Habibi, so uh, I think that says it all. Uh, I think since he started playing again, I don't know how many clean sheets we have and, uh, and keeps us all sharp uh, from the back and as a person, yeah. It's, it's difficult to describe him because uh, we left too many about, about him. Professional, really strict with his job and uh, really serious. And uh, yeah, in the dressing room, he's really calm. He's, uh, he's really calm in the dressing room. Very good left back. Always stay calm on the ball, likes to play football. Uh, he's quick and as a person, he's, uh, he's a joker. This one is the craziest. I think Jorginho is the craziest one, you know, in the dressing room. I say really that South American mentality, uh, the crazy mentality, that's Jorginho. Yeah, it's somebody you cannot hate on. Uh, only when you look at him, you you already love him. So uh, yeah, Angolo is Angolo. You know, on the pitch he's always able to laugh and then uh, you know, it's a good guy, humble guy, and uh, you know likes to work work hard and then I think that says it all about me. He works hard and then on the pitch uh, he's a nice guy. Uh, you know, uh, also real calm, calm guy. Yeah, really German, really German, Timo. Timo is really German uh, in all the ways. It's someone you can laugh with. Uh, I'm always in for a joke. And, uh, you know, yeah, in the West, I think you have to ask them. Chelsea have the chance to win a ninth FA Cup after reaching the showpiece occasion for the fourth time in five seasons. Their journey to the final kicked off at Stamford Bridge in January against League Two Morecambe. Frank Lampard selected a strong side and Mason Mount got the ball rolling in a 4-0 win. I was just thinking, get it out of my body and try and hit it quick uh, before the keeper set. Because they hit it so quickly and then quite low and hard, it managed to go in the far corner. So yeah, I was buzzing with it and yeah, obviously started our campaign off well. Poor league form was increasing the pressure on Lampard when Chelsea hosted Luton Town in the fourth round. This could break for Abraham, who slots it in the corner. The FA Cup is a competition that I grew up watching. You know, to be playing in it and to be scoring in it is a massive achievement for me. And that's that! Tammy Abraham for his hat-trick. It was a moment of respite for Lampard, but not enough to save his job. When fifth round weekend arrived, there was a new man in the dugout at Barnsley, and Thomas Tuchel's first taste of the FA Cup. They got him behind here, it's a tap-in for Tammy Abraham. Maybe we were happy there were no spectators because uh, we escaped with a very, very tight 1-0. Sol a great clearance from Abraham, right off the line to keep it at 1-0. I'm not sure if he would have done it if, if there was a full crowd behind the Barnsley team in this, this particular evening. 
Chelsea have reached more FA Cup quarterfinals than any club this century and were expected to progress against the Premier League's bottom side, Sheffield United. Ziyech there, and they've killed the tie, and they're heading to Wembley in the semi-final of the FA Cup. Chelsea and Manchester City will contest the Champions League final later this month, and Tuchel's Cup semi-final masterclass may count for a lot. And here goes Werner. Goalkeeper hesitates, he looks for Ziyech, open goal! Chelsea strike! Hakim Ziyech putting an end to Manchester City's hopes of a quadruple and ensuring history will be made by his manager. The first German to manage a side in an FA Cup final. Chelsea has a big history in the Cup and um, I want to do everything that we can uh, write another chapter. Still to come, it's been a long wait for Leicester. Former Fox Bobby Roberts relives their last cup final. Just a fantastic feeling when you walk out and there's like 100,000 there. It's just uh, an amazing feeling. And the pressure of our cup quiz is all too much for one man. Oh my God, why, 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 why? 
Why am I forgetting his name? No. Leicester lost in 49 and 61 and 63. So I think the fans were hopeful at the 69 one way we would manage to break the hoodoo, if you like. But uh, on the day, you know, it didn't quite work out. So it was played for or lost for. So not, not so good for the supporters, I'm afraid. the English Cup final, and even in Scotland, it was always on the telly. And then when you come down and start playing in England, you want to play in the Cup final. And at that time, you had to play in the FA Cup final to play at Wembley. So it was a, it was a big thing to, to get there. Leicester had been in three finals. The 49, they got beat with Wolves. Then they got beat in 61 with Tottenham, who I think went on to win a double that year. And then they lost to Man United in 63. So they'd been there three times in 69. Man City were overwhelming favourites to beat us, but um, the fans were still hopeful that we could do the job and we win the game, and obviously the players were as well. The teams are coming, and on the left, Leicester City. You walk up that gradual increase, it's, it's hard to explain, it's just a fantastic feeling when you walk out and there's like 100,000 there. It's just uh, an amazing feeling. We had a good side, we had um, Peter Shilton, David Nish and uh, Alan Clark, who played for England, so we had a pretty good team, yeah, we weren't a bad side. We knew it was going to be a hard match because they were a very good team, man say, but some would be on the right wing, and Bell was, he was a fantastic player, Colin Bell. He was brilliant on the ball, clever, good passer. When you played against them, you knew you, you had 90 minutes of really hard work. And Lister, kick off. The final, which so many people have said is a doddle for Manchester City. Well, it was a wee bit quite open, actually. They had shots, we had shots, but they sort of had this um, pass the ball a wee bit better than we did probably on the day. I mean, their goal, it was a terrific goal, and, and, and it was a hell of a shot for, for Neil Young. I mean, he, if he'd missed it, you couldn't have blamed him, but it, I mean, he absolutely rattled it in the top of the net. Summerby, back to Young. It was, it was early in the game, that was after about 20 minutes, I think. It was so you still felt a long way to go. Clark, Lockhead, if he goes! We did have some very good chances that um, on the day, some days they go in and some days they don't. But uh, it was a close game, you know, one nothing. It was there right till the end, you had a chance. They, I think they were better than us on the day, Manchester City. I've only watched the game once on, uh, on video, and that was about two years ago. Um, I couldn't bear to watch it again. And it all, it's all over. <laughs> when you lose in big matches like that, it's very, very disappointing. And, uh, it's disappointing for yourself and then for the, the, the team, the club, and the fans as well. There was 30,000, 40,000 fans there. And, uh, it's, so it's very disappointing all around that you've, you've no won the game. But, yeah, you've just got to accept it, you know, that these things happen and uh, possibly you'd say the better team on the day had won the game. Uh, I think I think that's that's probably one of the worst parts. The winning team go up and they come out and uh, it, uh, it's, that's part of the game, isn't it? You've just got to accept it. You never get over it. It's always one of these things you think, if only we'd done that or if only... That. You can't change things. These, these things happened and, uh, as I say, I, I was glad to play in a final. That was, it was getting, it would have been nice to have won it, but uh, no, it's, these things happen. Well, I'd love to see them winning the cup. I, I really would. As much for the fans, there's people who've maybe not seen the 49 cup final, but um, seen these, these cup finals in 61 and 63 and 69 and think, well, and it's been a long time since the last one, you know, 50 years. So to see the club actually winning the FA Cup after all these years, it'd be absolutely brilliant. Goalkeeper has come a long way off his line. He spills it right into the path of James Madison. Madders, funny, good guy, very family orientated. Confident, I think can sometimes be misplaced for arrogance, but confident in his ability. Just a good guy, we've got a lot of similar interests, that's why we get on well. He's a proper funny guy, he's always, well, when I was at Leicester, a good crack around the training ground, making everyone laugh. 
I'm, I'm going with Madders. He likes to dance, so I say Madders. When he first joined Leicester, we went away pre-season together um, as a team, and you had to share rooms, and me and him was in a room together. And that's when I realised that he is not a morning person at all. Neither of us are great cooks, but whenever we've cooked for each other in Leicester, I think I've always produced a better dish. I actually done an IQ test the other day, and uh, I'm apparently a genius. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with myself. Matters. He can't go a day without doing his hair. Whereas training, I don't really care what my hair looks like. He's got to do his hair every day for training as well. Away from football, I don't really like to do anything active. So probably, probably myself. Playing against my old team, there's, there's not going to be a day where I want to win the match more. So um, yeah, it'll be me. Seven hundred and sixty-eight clubs entered this season's FA Cup, with the lowest-ranked teams beginning their campaigns in August, in the preliminary and qualifying rounds. This is probably my proudest night. You know, uh, to be in the FA Cup is unbelievable. There was the usual mix of amateurs, debutants, and the odd familiar face, as the early stages encapsulated what it means to take part in the world's oldest cup competition. 32 non-league clubs featured in the first round as teams from League One and League Two entered the draw. The tie of the round saw Chorley, led by primary school teacher Jamie Vermiglio, take on Wigan. Chorley were trailing 2-0 before the 2013 winners were taught a lesson. In goes Connor Hall, he's got beyond the goalkeeper here and he scored! There were magical moments for Kings Lynn and Marine, both stunned football league clubs, as did a resurgent Stockport, thanks to a Rooney wonder strike. John Rooney from inside his own half! Round two saw Chorley's story continue after an incredible fight back at League One Peterborough. It's in! Two minutes from Chorley. And there was drama on Merseyside as Marine beats Havants and Waterlooville. Right at the death, Marine have their big moment. <laughs> Round three focused all eyes on the draw. 39, Tottenham oh! Hotspur. The Premier League leaders out the hat to play Marine. What a tie that is. It is the biggest gap ever between two, two competing teams. Marine hosted Mourinho and Spurs, but there was no fairy tale ending. You know, in the end, <laughs> we were laughing who, who, who was coming off the bench, but, you know, very proud of what we've achieved. Stockport saw their cup adventure come to an end against West Ham. But at Victory Park, Chorley kept the non-league flag flying against Derby County. This fantastic cup run continues for the Magpies from the sixth tier. Aston Villa were forced to field their under-18s against the Premier League champions, Liverpool. Despite a moment to savour for young Louis Barry, Liverpool triumphed by four goals to one. Meanwhile, Marcelo Bielsa's leads were outplayed by a League Two club. There's the moment for Crawley! And there was an unhappy return to Blackpool for Big Sam. The fourth round began with a bang. Oh, what an opening goal! Stunner after 11 minutes, and Wolves are ahead. Vitinha's wonder strike the difference as Wolves ended Chorley's cup dream. You know, we've been beaten 1 0 by a Premier League side, and I've just looked at the stats. We should have scored. It was also goodbye to the holders. There'll be a new name on the Emirates FA Cup this season. Arsenal are out. Premier League leaders Manchester City found the going tough at Cheltenham. It's Alfie May who's got him to score! Goodness me! But late goals from Foden, Jesus and Torres saw City home. 
At Old Trafford, Manchester United and Liverpool played out a five-goal thriller. Bruno Fernandes takes it, scores it, and does the magic again. At Goodison, round five's heavyweight clash didn't disappoint. What a cracker from Bernard. Five, four. Bournemouth were surprise winners at Burnley to keep football league interest alive. Southampton ended Wolves' hopes thanks to Stuart Armstrong and Danny Ings. And Scott McTominay's extra time winner was enough to wear Jolly Gunnar Solskjaer's men past West Ham. Into the quarterfinals, and Chris Wilder's time at Sheffield United had ended just before the trip to Chelsea and their exit. Manchester City's machine rolled on with a late double at Everton. Kevin De Bruyne to wrap it all up and does. Nathan Redmond was Southampton's star in a 3-0 win at Bournemouth. But Fred was the fall guy in Leicester. And a defensive shambles for Manchester United. Leicester City are into the FA Cup semi-finals. Both semi-finals were ultimately settled at the same time. Both Chelsea and Leicester scoring in the 55th minute to set up a first ever final between the two clubs. the Emirates FA Cup final and uh, Bamiang, he's a great sportsman. You know, he's just won the thing, he's so excited and uh, it's one of those things. We were all watching the game when the trophy fell. <laughs> we are the official silverware supplier for the Emirates FA Cup. We've got silversmiths, we've got polishers, we've got engravers. To be a silversmith, you need to be very patient because it takes a long time to craft something like this. You know, it takes years of learning the craft. I mean, this trophy stands probably up there with the best of them, you know. It probably is, it is the best, you know, everyone knows it. You know, when you look at it as a silversmith, you can see all that skill that's gone into it. Yeah, there's so much to this trophy and you just have to look at the base of all the history on there. Yeah, it's, it's magic. Every time it comes in for engraving, you know, it's, it's humbling, isn't it? It's a piece of history. Millions of people are gonna be Seeing this, it's going to go to the new champions, whoever they will be. Us fixing it in the workshop, it adds to the fact that you sit there and you think, yeah, you know, there was a dent there and it's gone now. I think it adds to the allure of the, of the whole FA Cup. We had uh, the repair at the start of the year from the last cup final. So we we're ready for, the, for this year's final and uh, hopefully it all comes back in one piece. Time for our traditional cup final warm-up. It's the quiz, and it's a tricky one. Are you helping me, or if I get it wrong, it's wrong, then? We'll give you a few clues, Wolf. Question one. Five players are sitting top of the scoring charts with four goals in this season's competition. Chelsea and Leicester each have a player. Can you name them? Hmm. Uh, of course, I'll say Kelechi. Gonna go with Kelechi in the Acho. Egonacho. For Chelsea, uh, Pulisic. Abraham. Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham. It is Kelechi, Iheanacho and Tammy Abraham who both have four goals going into the final and both will have eyes on becoming the leading marksman this weekend. Question two. As usual, the Minnows made their mark on the early rounds with cup upsets. But which non-league side reached the fourth round of this year's competition. Non-league side. Any clues who they played? Oh, I can't remember, man. I can't remember. This. Not, not sure. I have to pass on that one. They got knocked out by Wolves, but I can't remember the name. Chorley. Correct. It was Chorley FC of the National League North who knocked out league sides Wigan, Peterborough and Derby before losing to Wolves in round four. Question three. Thomas Tuchel is the first ever German coach to manage in an FA Cup final. But who is the only German player to have scored in one? Podolski. Balak. Ozil. Klinsmann. 
Oh my god, why, 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 why? These are difficult, these. The captain. Nope, don't know that one. Motosaka. Oh, Motosaka, yeah, yeah, Motosaka. Nice. Hard luck, Wilf. It was Arsenal's pair, Murta Saka, who scored in a 4 0 win over Aston Villa in 2015. Question four. Two members of Leicester's 2016 Premier League title winning side featured in the semi final victory over Southampton. Can you name them? Michael Brighton. Vardy. Jamie Vardy. Schmeichel and Vardy. And Schmeichel. Oh, Casper. Casper Schmeichel. The lads' Leicester connections making that one easy. Jamie Vardy and Kasper Schmeichel were the Premier League winners who featured against the Saints. And finally, question five. This will be the 15th final at the new Wembley. Since 2007, six different clubs have lifted the trophy. Can you name three of them? Chelsea. 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 Arsenal. Arsenal. Man United. Manchester City. Man City. Man City. Well done. The six FA Cup winners at the new Wembley are Arsenal, Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea, Portsmouth and Wigan. And with four out of five, it's the ex-Leicester boys who share the honours in this week's quiz. Good. Bad, not bad. I think the one that I didn't get was probably a pretty difficult one to get as well, so not too disappointed. <laughs> So, we're all set for the 140th FA Cup final at Wembley. Whether the day belongs to Leicester or Chelsea, it's sure to be a fitting end to a fantastic season. We'll leave you with some of the best moments from this year's competition. Enjoy the final, and we'll see you next season. Strike by Bissouma. Great moment for him, and he makes the most of it. And the joys unconfined here for Marine. And they're heading to Wembley.